I think I, the artwork was um, kind of a play uh, on the word I, which is the subject position I'm interested in, and I don't know exactly what it means. So the relationship perhaps between an author and an artwork and artwork and its context and, and the possibility that an artwork can have uh, an agency or lack of agency. And this is uh, where the title came from. Yeah. Welcome to the Kunsthalle Wien podcast. My name is Michael Simku. I'm part of the education team of Kunsthalle Wien. For this episode, we talked with the artist Iman Issa on her contribution to the exhibition No Feeling is Final, the Skopje Solidarity Collection. In 1963, a massive earthquake destroyed the city of Skopje almost completely. There was a huge scale effort of international solidarity to help and rebuild it nearly from scratch. The exhibition revolves around this story and the Museum of Contemporary Art Skopje and its very unusual collection of modern artworks. This show shows a selection of these works for the first time outside of the capital of North Macedonia. Thousands of artworks were donated to Skopje by international artists to help in this moment of crisis with the means of culture. Kunsthalle Wien asked contemporary artists to explore this fascinating collection and to present pieces of their choice in communication with their own practice. Iman Issa looks at the power of displays in relation to cultural institutions. For this exhibition, she combines eight pieces from the collection with her own work. She creates new relations of these works with each other and combines them with descriptive texts from different artworks to destabilize our preconceived ideas and knowledge to maybe liberate the pieces from our usual ways of thinking. Think of the work as one installation. Of course, it's composed of, of several works. Some of them are mine. Some of them are from the collection uh, of the museum in Skopje. Um, but I think of it as a as a coherent installation where everything is uh, related. And, uh, and the idea was to create an environment where things respond to each other. So they don't lose necessarily their individual characteristics. Like you can still think of each work as a work in its own right, with its probably its own systems and structures and the universe it builds. But at the same time, it's uh, the relationship between them that is also a major part of the work and how they relate to each other and what kind of um, maybe conversations they highlight mm -hmm. when they are placed next to each other. Um, uh, so this is uh, how I think of the work. And of course, it's, uh, it is very much done in response to the invitation um, by the VAV to, to think about this collection. Um, and, uh, and the works that I, I picked from the collection were works which coincided also with things I'm thinking uh, about uh, in the moment. Um, and uh, so in a way, it was also easy to combine uh, these works with my own works and, and to um, create, hopefully, what is, a, what is an environment that... Um, that makes sense as a, mm. as a whole composed of different parts that makes sense yeah so for me when uh i see the work and um also when i show it to other people because we usually do tours and stuff like that uh for me it seems very fitting in a way that you are working also in a sense uh curatorial or you use the works of others as part of your installation is that something that you already did um, to use the works of others in combination with your work or is it something new uh, I've had one experience where I was asked by the Kunstwerke here in Berlin to um, uh, to curate a show Uh, in 2021, it opened. Um, and this was the first time that I really curated a show which is not only of my works. And it was exactly like this, a combination oh, yeah. of my work 
with, with the other artists' works. Um, and then uh, what, what was interesting to me, first I thought this is a completely new endeavor and, you know, how am I going to go about doing this? But actually you realize when you start doing it, it's really not that different from working on mm. your own show. Because when you have, when you work, uh, with your own works uh, on an exhibition, you have to step outside of yourself. It doesn't become about you anymore. And you have to kind of take this outside this perspective uh, to the works and to try to think of them, not as the person who made them, uh, but in another capacity and also to to think of what kind of conversation they create through yeah. their special arrangements. Um, and uh, that's not so different than from working, of course, with other uh, artist works uh, of course you know that's not to say like I, I appropriate the works or anything like that I understand they are made by other people and it's very important to engage them in this conversation but to me um, actually the, the 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 fact that you when you make when you cure or let's say when you place your own work in an exhibition uh, it's also not about you so much so it's a similar it, it became clear to me that mm. it's not that different from working only with my own works I mean, and from what I get, that's already kind of uh, a major topic within your practice, right? This relation of um, of the artwork to maybe the viewer, but also to other works. Um, and also, I don't know, for me, it was like uh, going also from this title, I, the artwork. Um, how would you say from which perspective are these artworks speaking? Uh, so I, the artwork is the title of the installation, but maybe to go back and to, uh, to answer your question, um, most of the work I make, I think of it as a, as a display. And what I mean by that is it's a set of relationships relationships that only come uh, through in an exhibition space. So in a way there is no work and there is no exhibition. There is only the work in the exhibition or it only becomes a work when it's placed in the exhibition with these set of conditions and with these kinds of relationships where you have a text next to an object, next yeah. to the light to the plinth so you know there is really no other no work outside of that i would say so uh yes this this kind of spatial arrangement and which also involves time and involves um viewers and involves uh, all kinds of relationships um is it's is major or the main part of the work is the work in a way mm. um uh, the the other question about either artwork i think either artwork was um kind of a play uh, on the word I, which is the subject position I'm interested in, and I don't know exactly what it means. So the relationship perhaps between an author and an artwork, an artwork and its context, and, and the possibility that an artwork can have uh, an agency or lack of agency. And this is uh, where the title came from. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was exactly one of the, I mean, I felt a bit guilty when I wrote down the question because it's such a huge, huge question, but it, I don't know, it just came to my mind when I was thinking about your work is um, what, like on a very base level, what power or what agency can an artwork have in the first place for you? Is it like, um, yeah, no, maybe that's, that's, or do you f feel this question is too broad? No, I think, I mean, of course it is uh, too broad because it changes from case to case. It's not yeah. a uniform thing. But at the same time, I think the, the question, you know, I think a question that is worth uh, thinking about is, uh, you know, this possibility of an artwork to kind of play along with politically convenient narratives, to contradict them, uh, to, to, you know, to stay silent about them, to... to yeah, or to um, encourage them or to, um, yeah, resist them. So there are all kinds of ways that artwork can behave. And for me, the question is, you know, when you have these very um, clear narratives that could be summed up in sentences, like clear sentences where, you know, like this is a work about, I don't know, uh, freedom yeah. or like, you know, <laughs> whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> or you no, know, I mean sometimes you have also specific calls like gender freedom yeah, or like sure. you know, yeah. um yeah and then uh you know how the work kind of plays to that um 
uh, and whether, and this is not to say like it's not in kind of defense of like some co- kind of imagined autonomy of the work because uh, that's really not my interest. I have no interest in this term, but it's more um, an interest in what the work may choose to support or uh, not support mm. and uh, how much that could be related to intentions of a maker, how much of that can be related to the intentions of someone who frames the work, who speaks about it, who writes about it. Yeah, I mean, I was always when we did tours and, you know, some some of the tours are very like basic introduction also into the exhibition and you go through all the works and there is loads of works in this exhibition and you only have little time. But I always felt a little guilty with your work, like labeling it, giving it some quick paced meaning that just makes sense for this group of people standing in front of it. I always felt I'm not... I don't know. I'm not, I'm not just with this work because that seems exactly the question that it's posing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just just a statement. It's not a question. I was just thinking out loud. But I agree. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, but but that's kind of the, the the position that your work maybe brings the viewer into, which is um, a very interesting position because then you have to think about all these yeah huge questions, I guess. Um, do you think um, that an artwork can, I don't know, provide evidence be, uh, or an artifact in the end or something that really, I don't know, changes the course of history or a political problem or something like that? Do you believe in this, I don't know, kind of power? Well, one has to think how it does it, you know? So the idea that the artwork would kind of enlighten a spectator and the kind of humanism of that spectator is going to, you know, come into the world and change the world. That model, I'm not so sure. No, Mm. I I don't think so. Uh, I don't think this is how it works. And and even though it's a nice idea and I like it, uh, it's proved to be really not how things work. Because. Um, So, I mean, maybe uh, there are many other ways. Um, Maybe it's on the level of systems, like understanding how a system works, like making unveiling uh, structures, um, maybe providing different ways to think structures. Um, I think most of the case artworks are very feeble. Mm -hmm. It's a very feeble field. I wouldn't give it too much like I wouldn't assign it too much power. And at the same time, it's the, it's the, I think there is the kind of a potential, uh, let's say emancipatory potential in it as well. So it, it's kind of a contradiction, I guess what I just said, but <laughs> if I didn't believe also in this emancipatory, you know, potential, sure. then I don't yeah. think I would be able to work in that field either. So part of me feels, you know, yes, um, there, there is a space here where you can understand something. Maybe you can understand something about complexity, about human relationships. Mm. Maybe there is a, a moment where um, it can break binaries or it can complicate, uh, you know, w- what um, what might be a solid, a somewhat solid opinion about something. Uh, so in that case, um, yeah, I, I believe in that space, I guess. At the same time, um, I, I don't think um, I don't think they're very powerful tools mm. uh, for for changing uh, things. I think that that needs a different kind of space. If mm. you really are serious about changing yeah. um, things, then I think you need to engage uh, in a different capacity. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. And do you feel like this? Because that's also something that I'm, I'm thinking about then about how exhibitions are made and how uh, institutions what kind of exhibitions and displays in a way they create do you feel um, I don't know this uh, system in a way problematic that it changes um, the works too much or that it uses them for their own narratives or do you feel that's fair coming from, from, your, from your work that questions these relations so much uh, I don't think anything exists in a vacuum. 
So mm-hmm. anything that exists, exists in relationship to something else. And I think if you are working in art, yeah, then of course you are in relationship with the institution that that is showing it. So that's already a, a relationship that's part of the work, I would argue. And so I think the, the point that I try to do is to sensitize myself as much as possible, because also a lot of these frameworks I'm, I'm sure I'm blind to, but as much as possible to try to understand the framework that I'm entering and to work with it uh, to my own purposes. Mm. But no, I don't believe there is like a kind of neutral space where the work exists and then it's like kind of altered by this institution. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think it's always a negotiation. It's yeah. always a you enter and it is exactly this relationship that creates what the work is i I don't think there is anything outside of that yeah and in your work with the pieces from skopje did you go there and and um did you go to the museum or um how how did you pick out the the works that you are uh, choosing or using uh, yes, yeah, so I looked. Uh, I did. I went to Skopje and I looked uh, uh, at the collection. But already before I went, I had uh, studied the collection through images, and I had already a sense of which works I was interested in. So I kind of went to see, um, uh, yeah, these particular works that I had already picked. Uh, to see them in person. And then when I was there, I realized that some of them didn't really <laughs> fit the way I imagined mm. they would fit. So I, I ran into other ones that I hadn't seen or I didn't notice, and then they seemed more fitting. So then it kind of evolved from from this yeah. encounter. Yeah. It must, it, uh, I picture it now like a kid in a candy store situation where you see all this. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. I mean, oh, I can see that. That looks good. Yeah. <laughs> and and I mean, exactly. it's it's such a unique collection because uh, I don't know many of the artists I'd never heard before. Um, but mm-hmm. it's, uh, such interesting works that also, on the one hand, there are very huge names, and on the other hand, there also seem to be lots of artists who are not so present in this. I don't know, canon or like like uh, usual Western canon, and I think that's also something. This exhibition really shows very well um, this kind of range. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. for my mm-hmm. no, no, no. No, I'm gonna say for my case, I didn't know any of the artists that I ended up working yeah. uh, on or with. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, maybe more zooming in into your work, there uh, there seem to be no faces, but lots of hands. Can you talk about that? Uh, I think there are some faces. There are some faces, yeah. Yeah. So it's not a. But but it, but you a, but you seem to blur out a lot of faces. Let's put it like that. Um. I think I don't know if I blur out some faces. I think some works there is no face, like mm. the face is not part of the of the work because. Um, um, I mean, there is no reason. It's just not part of the work, mm. and in some others the face is part of the work and they sit next to each other I think comfortably which tells me that it's not really about that like that's not the main <laughs> that's not the main uh let's say criteria for 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 all of the works uh but I think it's maybe again the space that I was trying to speak with to you about which is the space of you know, being able to determine uh, how something fits into a larger context. And mm. and maybe sometimes you can have the face, sometimes it's necessary that the face is absent uh, in order to, to have that space, I, mm. I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it just, I don't know, it just uh, s- stroke me that there were like these figures um, that that have no face that, and, and on the other side, there are like, um, hands like in this one video with the uh, with the photo slides, but also the huge like animal like hand on the mm-hmm. wall that seemed to me like like very striking uh, in a way. Um, yeah, and all the, also like the the figure with the in the middle with the feet, also like with the ball in the middle. Um, mm-hmm. Because I showed it the other day, uh, we looked at it with a school class, and they were like, "Oh, it's a dancer." What mm-hmm. else could it be? Yeah. And uh, yeah. kind of like this association in a way. Mm. 
I also like it because it is exactly a dancer. And I think of, yeah, dancing as an activity where one is maybe in between states or which mm. kind of felt very right for, for this character, yeah. um, which, yeah, is in between, is a cut in between, you know. It's not really fitting into any one um, description. description. And, and I think mm. dance is a, is a good field or like it's a good space for, mm. for expressing that. It's always, it seems always in movement. There, there actually seems like loads of movement in all of it, in all these pieces. Um, and on the other hand, you have all this movement and all these, I don't know, bodily things, but then uh, you also use text in a very particular way. Could you talk about that a little bit? How you use text um, and also where these texts are coming from that are framed descriptions next to some of the works? Yeah, so there is uh, a few different works and each work, each of them has, uh, you know, a different relationship to the text component that is part of the work. So a lot of these works of mine, at least, uh, where the text is present, it's really part of the work. So it's not like an addition. It's not like you have the sculpture, you have the video and then you have the text. It's yeah. like, the, it's like an equal part of the yeah. work. Of course, it has a different uh, structural capacity, uh, but at the same time, I treat them in an equal way mm. where the, yeah, the sculpture and the images and all of them are kind of in the service of meaning. So yeah. um, they are uh, doing something quite similar. Um, uh, let's say for the works where you have a description uh, of a work uh, with a title, This is part of the lexicon series where you have a few uh, of works from this series and the exhibition. And this series is based on the relationship between a work, um, an existing artwork, not my existing artwork, but another artist's existing artwork, and the title of that work, especially when the relationship to the title is a illustrative relationship or the title is describing the work. Um, and uh, it's based on these terms. Um, which I kind of collected the starting from 2012 mm -hmm. and which I felt uh, were a bit, uh, let's say, ambiguous. And of course, okay. all language is ambiguous because it's kind of performed as you use it. But um, to me, some of these terms felt as if they were kind of almost lacking mm -hmm. um, a clear signifier. And I felt I didn't really understand what they would allude to. And I had a hard time to use them. So I started to think of artworks as a space where this um, um, relationship to words could be um, renegotiated. And maybe the reason for that is because, you know, um, let's say I want to speak to you about the street market. So I show you a photograph of a street market and sure, then yeah. maybe you, you see it and you recognize things I don't necessarily associate with the street market, like tradition or poverty or some other thing. Mm. So I realize, okay, then I, I need to do something else. I need to flip this image upside down, or I need to show you maybe a picture of something completely different. Like I would show you a picture of a table and I would call it a chair. <laughs> <laughs> and in art, you can do this, you know, mm. you can show someone a picture of a table, you call it a chair and they will entertain the possibility. They will think about it, yeah. you know? So I thought, okay, maybe art is the space where you can renegotiate uh, uh, um, the references of, of these terms or how maybe references is not the right word, but like how they, they could possibly function mm. and what they could possibly materially and conceptually uh, signify. So this work is based on um, works which have uh, titles I, I, I find kind of like uh, inhabiting this, uh, let's say, ambiguous space or problematic space, um, a, a title such as laboring or destiny or, you know, dancer mm. or <laughs> uh, morning or morning yeah. as a that um and uh, and um i what i did is i kind of attempted a remake of the original works and this remake involves both a description of the original work next to kind of let's say a contemporary study of the term that i undertook my myself mm. um yeah if that makes sense it's a bit yeah. of a it's a long description and it's of course hard to understand unless you see the work Sure, but it also makes clear um, that you very much uh, question this relation be between like the uh, significant and the signifi signifier, 
uh, I can say it right, or b b between the word and the meaning or the spaces in between that. And I think that comes across very clear. The only thing that I was maybe looking at different, uh, funnily enough, because I was in a way when I looked at the work, I was not really paying too much attention to the titles. Because for me, it was very clear what you said in the beginning, that it's one big installation. So, uh, yeah, I was, I, I was also like tr trying to read it like not as this, because for example, this work, a Lexicon, I think it's, it's called that you were talking about. Is th that still an ongoing series? Uh, it's finished, it's but finished. It, has, it went for many years. Ah, yeah. It started in 2012 and I think I finished it in 2019. Yeah. Yeah. And do you show it usually also in such close relation with other works or is that uh, also spe uh, specific for this exhibition? Uh, sometimes. Mm. I think uh, some of these theories, sometimes they benefit from being isolated because then you get a clear sense of the logic. Sometimes mm. it works of, um, next to, to other uh, works. So I think in this case, because of the, the way the exhibition is, I, I thought it might work. But yeah. I understand what you say about uh, no. having a hard time identifying. Mm -hmm. and, and no, no, it's, it's not, a, not a critique. It, it's, I think it's, it's, it was just like, um, I was just... Uh, not really paying that much attention to it because it made so much sense that all of these works are in a way communicating with each other anyway. That, 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 that's yeah. more what I'm saying. Um, yeah. But um, because um, I, for me, it, it was very logical <laughs> that my next question from like this work leads to the novel that's in the middle of, but, but, but that's basically in a way, I guess, from another work then. But um For me, that also relates a lot that uh, in a way you created this, I would call it, I hope it's fair to say this, like um, a novel that's based on like a real novel, but in a way your fictitious retelling of it, that it's just one image um, in, in the, and, and the title of the original novel. Um, that's All of that sounds very confusing. Maybe I have to add some description. <laughs> afterwards um now but maybe can you talk about this because i really like this idea that you take this protagonist in a way um and you still have the title and everything um how you worked with this original work um yeah yeah mm -hmm. maybe i just go back uh, for a second to something sure. you said sure, sure, about sure. the lexicon works because i think it relates to my answer about this uh, because you know uh, of course you can say lexicon is about the relationship of the signified to the signified but honestly i feel also that's not a very interesting relationship because i think by now we know this is a fluid relationship mm. i think I also believe that language is a fluid and, and uh, a space that only gets activated by usage. So the point is not just to, to point to this gap, but I think what I was interested in, and this is what you will see in a lot of the titles, why they have the date, like, mm. you know, it's, for example, you would have untitled study for 2019 yeah. or Uh, you know, a composition study for 2019 is why uh, why might some terms at some you know date <laughs> become a bit more uh, interesting than at other you know at other dates? And all of these terms felt to me like they they had a kind of weight and load to them that had to do with the, the present moment. So mm. I, I would say that it's not, you know, that it's also something located in time and maybe, you know, in some years or maybe then these these works or terms might not be so interesting mm. anymore. That's kind of, or at least you can say they were interesting in retrospect in these particular <laughs> dates. Yeah. So even though you have, for example, no mention of the artist's name, mm -hmm. In a lot of these works, you always have the date of the original work and the date of the new remake. Yeah. Um, it's just something to, to point out. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, it's, it's a relationship to maybe a historical moment, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this other work that you um, mentioned, it's called I, the Protagonist. Um, uh, and it is about a character from this uh, novel 
which is quite a famous novel in Egypt. It's called The Open Door by mm-hmm. Hatsi Fazayet. Um, it was written uh, in the 60s, and it is uh, it was a, a very important book when it came out, but also in, uh, in retrospect, it's very respected and often referred to as one of the uh, you know, first feminist uh, books written by a woman because there were other works um, that, that um, I mean, novel, I mean, not just uh, mm. a book. Um, and, uh, and yeah, to me, I, I was kind of interested in that space because I like this writer very much. I like her work and I think um, she's a very um, sensitive uh, writer and that the work is, is quite a nuanced work. And at the same time, you know, it really fits uh, very easily into this three line uh, description. So I was kind of interested in that mm. uh, space, uh, how a work can kind of navigate that uh, that space and uh, and it seemed to me that a character like Layla uh, goes along with a lot of that is being said about her, but also doesn't. And and this was kind of the the impetus behind trying to to think about this dynamic and relationship between uh, a work and and the kind of implications it has. Mm. Uh, maybe it has it relates a bit to your question about how an artwork can change society or the capacity for change. Um, because I, I think there is one narrative where the artwork seems very much as if it's part of this change. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I also asked my colleagues from the education department if they have questions for you or if they, because they also, of course, have a lot of experience um, with the works and talking about them. And um, two of them were really a bit puzzled by the inclusion of uh, the video of the uh, woman or a teenager from Kuwait doing a testimony. Um, and I mean, I, I think I, I understand why, why you using it, but maybe it's worth um, talking about that because I think that, feels also and you were talking about that how um these works also relate to questions that are very relevant right now and i think that story very much um relates very much to the current moment sadly um yeah uh, maybe you could talk about why, why you included that and the meaning of it and yeah Uh, I will uh, uh, I will uh, answer this, but maybe perhaps you can explain to me how you think it's relevant to the present moment, just to get a sense of where. Um, I think it's very relevant because uh, I think these kinds of stories, these kinds of how um, videos and testimonies and stuff like that, and also uh, uh, like these stories of cruelty are used right now all across nowadays. Back then it was TV, but nowadays on all the social media channels in the fog of war, be it in, the U- in Ukraine or in Israel-Palestine, being used really um, to uh, make different factions act in a way. And back then it was the story how, or this news uh, reel tells the story of how in a way, uh, the U.S. politicians looked for arguments why the U.S. should enter the war or should enter a war in Iraq. And so, yeah, I have to think about that, of course, when you, I don't know, um, see different kind of, I, I now call it propaganda. Some of it is true. Some of it is not true. You never know what it's true. And you are, I don't know, caught in this strange in-between world. And um, that that's also, I mean... Yeah, th- that's why I also thought um, this story, of course, with all these questions between meaning and all these spaces between what you see and what it means and what effect it has. So it, th- that's why it makes a lot of sense to me that it's part of the installation. Um, but this this piece um, apparently, also my, my colleagues found it very interesting and they asked me to ask you. So yeah, that's that does that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. And I think you answered exactly, you know, how it fits because it's exactly inhabiting that space I just described. But it's not a piece, which is a video about this, uh, uh, you know, a narrative at all, the story of this girl. This piece is part of lexicon. So in lexicon, the way it works is you always have a title, uh, 
and then you have a kind of description of the original work, and then you have a remake uh, of the, uh, let's say, a remake uh, based on a contemporary understanding of the term. Mm. So for example, in Dancer, you have another work, which is the two lenticular prints, you have the description of the original work, and then you have Dancer. This work is, is untitled, yeah. so this is the term. Uh, it's untitled and it's based on a, a on a, a work which is untitled, which is titled untitled, uh, and it seemed like a fitting uh, kind of work. And it's an edited uh, uh, film, so it's not just about the new story I edited it, but it does include the story of this uh, teenager. And for me, I've known this story for a long time. It's from the early nineties, so yeah. it's not. Even the recent Iraq war, it's the Gulf War, the first Gulf War from 91. And to me, it was always a very amazing story. Like mm. I never forgot it, of course, because you have this girl and you have the testimony and you have, but also because it was, you know, it was on national television. It was everywhere. It was a story that journalists picked up and you just imagine what kind of journalists they don't even check, like who yeah. <laughs> That you would be so lazy to construct a story that you would end up with like the daughter of the <laughs> with the ambassador who lives in the states as the so to me it was always a fascinating uh, story uh, and exactly that kind of space of um, yeah and maybe also the 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 limits of of um, one what 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 one might term as like sympathy antipathy or yeah. Uh, so it was an interesting story, but it, it is not about this story. It's about the relationship of the term to the work. And this seemed, this video that I made seemed like a, a good kind of, um, uh, for me, a good study for what this term might, mm. might mean today. So it's really related to that. It's, it doesn't sit alone. But for my own, let's say my own purposes, I've always been fascinated by this. So yeah, 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 no, no, and it's you know, um, and the reason it's in the exhibition is because it fits exactly. I mean, this work fits exactly all of the concerns I have. It's to me, it's very, very similar to the other works. Yeah, it's just that here I use the news as for some other, you know, works to use the sculpture, or I mean, there are different ways to go about it. But for me, it's not different. I yeah, no, no, I, I, I totally get that, but it has this um, as a try to point out strange effect right now that it feels so like we are surrounded by these kinds of stories constantly right now so it feels very yeah contemporary or fitting to this contemporary moment let's say it like that yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. um that's i think I, we ran through all of my questions but i mean you, you never gave me an answer about hands <laughs> is there yeah. a, is there a special uh, because I, I I don't know just without knowing anything and that when when I usually the, the thing is when I usually work uh, in these exhibitions the first thing I do is I try not to read the text because I don't want to know too much um, and that that really struck me that I suddenly saw hands everywhere do um, is is there a special thing about that or was it just coincidence hands and fingers pointing and I don't think it's coincidence but I don't know if it's something that really lends itself to language so much but mm. uh, because there is one work that you mentioned I think which which is the film with the with the images from the paintings and artworks of hands this is like uh, these are photographs taken in uh, two places the mm. Museum in Cairo and also the Catalan Museum in Barcelona, mm -hmm. uh, and they, they are kind of mixed together with a soundtrack that um, Tyler Friedman has composed, which is of clapping and hand movements, mm -hmm. and it is part of lexicon theory. So it's based on a work titled Composition. Oh, yeah. So this, mm -hmm. this idea of composition, and it sits next to that. Um, so yeah, I, I think it, they are important for sure. I think there is something about uh, you know maybe the the ability of hands to to communicate gestures, feelings, statements, mm. and, and so forth, and so forth. Uh, that is important. But at the same time, I don't really have uh, you know a statement I can tell yeah, yeah, you yeah, why. No, no. It was just it was just. A, but just I agree. Yeah, I think they are. There is a kind of interest in hands. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> just give. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. The, I also felt it was it had something to do with communicating and stuff like that and yeah and also with the clapping sounds and everything um 
which works quite nice. Um, it's a composition based yeah. on a titled yeah. composition. Yeah. Yeah. Did we forget something major that um, everybody should know and we completely blanked out up to this point? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, for me, it's definitely a dance. Uh, I mean, the exhibition is very dense, and <laughs> I think my part, even though it might look a bit sparse, it, it's quite dense. So I think it's how all of these things can, you know, sit next to each other. I don't know. I think this is something we can reflect upon mm. later. But it, it doesn't seem to me that it's like an exhibition you can just kind of walk through quickly and, and things can confirm or... or um, you, you mean yeah. the, the exhibition in general or, or your exhibition within the exhibition? Yeah, both. Both. Yeah. Yeah. I also, I also mm -hmm. feel you could spend like days in the exhibition with the with the backstory of of Skopje and the earthquake alone. I feel. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, was it? Did you have like uh, more uh, works from the collection or from your own practice lined up for this? And did you have to choose, or was it clear from the start? It was clear. I actually want to, yeah, it was the opposite where I felt I, I even had too many and I wanted to take some out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I think it's the, it was, yeah, I was happy with the, with the, with, with what I had. No, I didn't feel like I missed uh, something in there. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Then I would say thank you very much for talking to me. And maybe I'll see you in Vienna at some point. Yeah, thank you as well for talking to me and for your questions. Thank you for listening to the Kunsthalevin podcast. If you haven't yet, come by and see No Feeling is Final, the Skopje Solidarity Collection. The exhibition is still on till the 28th of January. Till the next episode and have a nice day.